All right, praise God. I'm going to uh, start out with two different texts. First, turn with me to Luke chapter 1. And then we'll be backing up to Matthew 16. But Luke chapter 1. Starting in verse 26. Luke 1, 26. It says, Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin to throw to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. Amen. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Interject here. That doesn't mean we worship Mary or pray to Mary. No. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive a son, or you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great. And she's being told here, in a sense, and this is just one thing of who Jesus is. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. No. Now turn back with me to Matthew 16. What verse did you stop at, Pastor? Oh, I don't know. I already left it. <laughs> Matthew what? 26. Well, we're in uh, oh, Matthew 16, yeah. 6 through 13, starting 13. Okay. I saw a funny uh, emoji thing, or a funny thing on Facebook in relation to the song, Mary, Did You Know? And said, yeah, the angel Gabriel told her. <laughs> so think about it. We sing that song, and it gets into all this, Mary, Did You Know? Da, 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 da. She may not have known all of that, but the angel Gabriel did say he was going to be the son of God, and he'll be great, and all that. Elizabeth told her. Elizabeth, when she met with Elizabeth, she yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Matthew 16. Now I'm back too far. Well, 13. 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah. Or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? And that's what's key important, church, is who do you say Jesus is? Right. Who's Jesus to you? Again, we need, and I know we are, but we're going to be in a personal relationship with him. Amen. He's to be, quote, our God. Yeah. There's different stories and instances in the Bible where, you know, God did something and the unbelievers or, you know, other religious sects or whatever would say your God. Well, he needs to be your personal God. And it's sad that there's still so many today that don't know Jesus as Savior and Lord. Amen. So many today still uh, believe in false prophets, still in false cults and false religions. And it's like, we all know it, but Jesus is the truth, the life, and the way. Amen. No man comes to the Father but by him. So he said, then who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ. Mm -hmm. What's the Christ? What's Christ mean? Messiah. Messiah. What else? Christos, the anointed one. The son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed, to this, revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. Again, who do you say that I am? Many people around the world have their own opinions and beliefs about who Jesus is. Some just think he was a great teacher. Some think a prophet. You know, Muslims believe he was a great teacher and a prophet. Well, again, you can take that a whole lot further with what they don't believe and some of what they do believe that's not in line with Scripture. And not just Muslims, but other religious sects as well. Others think he was a fraud. Some don't even believe he existed. Then there are others like us that believe he was who he said he was. Glory to God. Amen. 
We believe he is who he said he is. I wish I could say I came up with this next part. I didn't. I read it elsewhere years ago. But Jesus could only be one of four things. A legend, a liar, a lunatic, or Lord our God. There's so much biological or historical, historical and archaeological evidence that supports his, his uh, existence yep. that every reputable historian agrees that he was not just a legend. If he was a liar, why would he die for his claim? Amen. And think about this, all the disciples that followed him, not just the original 12, but others after that. If he was a liar and a fraud, why would they be willing to die for him? If he was a lunatic, how did he engage in intelligent debates with his opponents? Yeah. Even as a child or a teenager, I don't know what age he was, but he'd be in the temple teaching and debating. A uh, lunatic wouldn't be doing that. So if he was a lunatic, how did he engage in intelligent debates with his opponents or handle the stress of his betrayal and crucifixion while continuing to show a deep love for his antagonists. He said he was Lord God, and the evidence supports that claim. So who is Jesus to you? Was he just a great teacher or one of many prophets? Was he a fraud, or is he who he said he was? This is something everyone needs to know and get settled. If he's a fraud, we're wasting our time putting our faith in him. We're wasting our time gathering together, worshiping a fraud. That's right. We might as well just be a part of some other club that gathers together on a weekly basis. Right. Yeah. It's a football crowd. And I've heard it said years ago, and I agree. But some people say, well, what if you're wrong? Well, I still lived a blessed and joyful life. Yes. If you're wrong, you're spending an eternity in hell. Right. So I got nothing to lose if I'm wrong. If we're just all dirt when we leave and that's it, so be it. Hallelujah. But the joy that I know we've experienced, the peace that I know we've experienced, right. all that we've experienced serving the Lord Jesus Christ, the Anointed One, the Messiah, the Wonderful, the Counselor, the Prince of Peace, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, everything He is, it wasn't a waste. Amen. So there. He's not a liar, not a fraud. There's no way he could just be a great teacher or just one of many prophets. Again, the things that he prophesied, the things that he did. If he was a liar, if he was a lunatic, then he couldn't be. If there was any sin in him at all, he couldn't be. The lamb that was slain that shed his blood as a sacrifice for our sin. Trying to trim this down a little bit because there's a lot in here. <laughs> so who did Jesus say he was? Well, Matthew 24, and you can just write these down. Matthew 24, 4, Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying I am the Christ, and will deceive many. So there's going to be others that try to say they're the Christ. Even today, I've seen some. Well, not yeah. literally today, but yeah. the season of today or the last year or so. I think there's one clown in Florida or something. Yeah. They act like they're the modern day Messiah or Jesus. And, and yet, people will follow them. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said in the last days, many are going to be deceived. Now you can turn with me to Matthew 26. Sixty-two to sixty-four, and the high priest arose and said to him, "Do you answer nothing? What is it that these men testify against you?" Jesus kept silent. And the high priest answered and said to him, "If I put you under oath by the living God, tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God." Jesus said to him, "It is as you said. It is as you said." So Jesus said, admitted who he was, and that he was the Christ, the Son of God. I already quoted it, but John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way. 
uh, Oprah, he is the only way. Amen. Years ago, and others still say there's many ways to God. No, there's not. There's one, and it's only through faith in Jesus Christ. And that's the one thing I love about preaching overseas to, in India, in Pakistan, in these nations. India, man, they got, I forget how many thousands or millions of different gods right, or whatever. Right. But I love preaching. And again, when you're in those countries, you can't, like, I can't slam all or Muhammad when I've been in Pakistan or any of the Muslim nations. But I can preach Jesus. Yes. And I can, and I did. And I declared that Jesus is the only way to the Father. Right. He's the only one that died for your sin. He's the only one that rose from your dead. Rose from your dead. Rose from the <laughs> dead. dead. You're dead, my dead. I don't know. But he is the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. And again, no one comes to the Father except through him. Uh, you can write this down. John 6, 47. And again, if you're speed page flippers, you can go to them. John 6, 47. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Yes. He is the bread of life. In verse 51 of that same chapter, it says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. Mm -hmm. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. And that doesn't mean we, quote, literally eat of his flesh. But we put our faith and our trust in him. So we partake of communion, which represents his body and his blood. In John 9, 4, I just love all this. All the different titles, all the different things that Jesus is. In John 9, 4, it says, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Now he's in heaven now. So what are we to be on this earth? We're to be the light. We're to represent him. And again, it doesn't matter how dark it gets. Any little bit of light will illuminate it. So you may think you alone are insignificant among darkness, among the workplace, among unsafe family members, but you're light. And oftentimes, again, that's why they reject you and they rebel against you. Because you're the light. You're representing him and they know they're not right with God. They know they're still walking in darkness. Scripture elsewhere talks about uh, a fragrance. We release a fragrance, a fragrance, if you will. Either reminding them of their eternal life of their, or of their eternal separation from God. Well, regardless how people respond... In the world, we need to be light. We're not to unite with them and partake of darkness with them. Right. We're to be the light on this earth as well. Yes, in John 10, 7. John 10, 7. Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. Yes, yes. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. Mm -hmm. Meaning they weren't legitimate. Mm -hmm. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Again, it's only through the door. Only through Jesus that we have salvation. John 10, 13 says the hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. There are some so-called shepherds Pastors, they're just in it for the money. They don't care about the sheep. They're, they're never amongst you. It's just, you know, I'm not seeing it services. And I get it to an extent. And some of the bigger churches, everybody and their brother would be one to grab a hold of them or bend their ear or whatever. But you still got to make yourself available. Yeah. But I've seen it in some of these bigger churches where after the worship already begins, the pastor will come out. When they're done, they jet on out as well, and usually it's they got their little posse with them or whatever. <laughs> I don't care how big this church would ever get. We refuse to do that. No. We're not hirelings. We're not in it for the money. Man, I made a whole lot more money running my own businesses, but the joy wasn't there. The peace wasn't there. The satisfaction wasn't there because I wasn't only doing what God called me to do. Mm -hmm. He 
called me out of all that. And again, it's amazing. Again, we are blessed. This is a blessed church Amen. for the amount of people we have, the giving that y'all do. Because I know a lot of other small churches, they're struggling. One recently, I still don't know why per se, but they shut down and merged with a bigger church here in town. So regardless of our size, God's taking care of us. Amen. And God's blessing us. And by us, I mean the whole span. And I'm excited to see where our next building is going to be. Amen. Because again, it's as I said before, it's like a slingshot. He's pulled us back yep. to launch us further than we would have ever went before, even in another other location. Amen. Now, he could have done it. But I'm, he's Lord, not me, so I'm going to leave it up to him. Yeah. How he wants to bless us and what he wants to do. But he says, I know my sheep and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I had a whole lot more, but I'm going to skip through some of this. Here's what some others called Jesus. Turn with me to Matthew 8. Matthew chapter 8. Oh, you're faster than me. 28. Or what did I say? Yeah, Matthew 8. While I was there, then I started to go to 28. Because that's what verse we're starting in. Matthew 8, 28. When he had come to the other side of the country of the... Uh, yeah, whatever that is. What in the rig? Uh, Gergesenes. I figured since he's an awesome teacher, he'd know. Gergesenes? Yeah, Gergesenes, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. There met him two demon possessed men coming out of the tombs, exceedingly fierce, so that no one should pass that way. Mm -hmm. Suddenly they cried out, saying, What have you to do with us, Jesus, you Son of God? Mm -hmm. Have you come here to torment us before our time? Demons! even knew he was the son of God. Amen. And they know who you are. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Either you are a threat or you're not. Yeah. Think about the seven sons of Sceva. Yeah. Trying to cast the demons out. In the name of Jesus, who Paul preached. Mm -hmm. And they're Jesus I know, Paul I know, who are you? Beat the snot out of them and they ran away naked. Amen. So if you don't realize who you are, know who you are, not doing anything for the kingdom of God, not walking right before God, well, the devil never bothers me. Well, maybe he doesn't know who you are. Well, I don't want him to know who I am. No, I want him to know who I am. Maybe he knows who I am too much with all that I've gone through these last couple of years. That's all right. Because I know who resides on the, lip, on the inside of me. I know the greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. I know that I'm more than a conqueror through Christ who loves me. I know I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If God be for me, who can be against me? And it's the same for every one of you. Hallelujah. And that's why it's so important that we know who God is. So it says gatherings. Okay, gatherings. Yeah. Yeah. Scenes, it's also gatherings. And then Mark 3 11, it says, The unclean spirits, whenever they saw him, fell down before him and cried out, saying, You are the Son of God. So they knew who, who he was. In Luke 2.11 it says, For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. So he's referred to as Savior. He's referred to as Christ the Lord. Another demon one. Luke 4.41 Demons also came out of many crying out and saying, You are the Christ, the Son of God. He rebuked them, did not allow them to speak, for they knew that he was the Christ. Isn't it amazing that Jesus didn't want people to truly know, in many cases, who he was? Because the throngs and the mobs of people would often follow him. But yet, what do we do? We want, you know, somebody gets healed or whatever. It's like, we want everybody and a brother to know. And the scripture talks about, uh, I'm trying to think of the lepers. 
Now how Jesus humbled himself. Oh, made of himself no reputation. Well, how many ministry are all about their reputation? Right. Right. Now it always needs to be about him. Yes, I believe we're to honor ministry gifts. But we're also to honor one another. Yes. And I've seen it too many times where those in ministry, they just expect people to serve them and honor them. No, <laughs> Jesus was the greatest servant of all. Yes. And if you're a true leader, you're going to be a servant. Hallelujah. I'm to be a servant. Preach. Well, I got no problem vacuuming, taking out trash, helping set up, doing any of that kind of stuff. Because I'm to be a servant. To lead by example. Well, my, uh, a lot of the quote ministry excellence I got from Pastor Billy Sanders, our first pastor in Texas. Because he was all about excellence and perfection. I mean, that daycare, school, in addition to the church. If he's walking through and he'd see paper or lint or something on the floor, he'd pick it up and he'd rant. How he knew teachers or somebody had to walk by that yeah. and didn't bother to pick it up. How hard is it, Jerry, to pick something up on the floor? Now, he wasn't correcting me. He was just exampling excellence before me. And he often did that. So, again, I just encourage you, even though there's different people that clean here, hey, if you see a trash can full, take it out. Yes. Or at a minimum, if you see we're out of something that we need, let me know. Amen. Some people go and buy it. That's fine. But, like, we're about out of coffee cups. So, John, let me know. I got some orders. So, again, it's about excellence. We're to serve one another. Jesus, again, was the Christ, the Savior of the world. And I already opened with it at the very beginning of the service, but Isaiah 9, 6 says, For unto us a child is born, because Jesus, again, is many things. Unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. His name will be called Wonderful. Isn't he wonderful? Yes. yes. Counselor. Yes. There's no better counselor than him. And I know the Holy Spirit is the comforter, the counselor that lives in us. He brings us comfort when we need it. We need wisdom. We need direction. We need actual wisdom and counsel. It comes from him. See, we skip, I guess, a whole lot of mistakes and dumb stuff that I know I'm not the only one. But some of the mistakes and Dumb stuff that we've done if we seek him first. Right. Ask for his wisdom. Ask for his direction. Yes. I was joking with John. He got a Mustang a few months ago. And it's only got two seats in the back. Kids always want to ride with him. And you can't lean. You're not supposed to have one of them in the front. Well, he's went and traded it in for a Challenger. Yeah. For a Challenger because it's got three seats in the back. He only had the thing a couple months. Well, I made fun of him because I've done the same thing in the past. Well, I haven't went just two months, but even Charlotte sometimes, you trade cars like I do shoes or, you know, <laughs> whatever. So I'm glad to see I got somebody else in the family that... It's nice while it lasts. Yeah, nice while it lasts. And I even offered to buy it from him, and my wife got ballistic. No, hey, you're not. You're not. And Jenny even tried to fuel the fire. I was just joking. <laughs> And then yesterday she made some comment, oh, about somebody else at 60 getting some kind of a fast car. And I said, well, I'm 60. Why couldn't I have got that Mustang? I oh, have had three or four Jaguars over the years. <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> that had nothing to do with the message. Just wanted to throw that one out. Oh. He's wonderful. He's counselor. Yes, yes, yes. He's the mighty God. Yes, yes. What has any other, quote, false God ever did for anybody? I know others when ministering to Muslims. Well, what's Allah done for you? Has he answered this prayer? Has he answered that one? Has he healed? No, go down a list. And it's no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Well, you need to see what Jesus can do for you. Even right now, with all the chaos going on in other countries and all, and still COVID, oh, COVID. I cannot wait till this is gone, if it's ever gone. I get so tired of because I just want to see what's going on in, like, local news. But continually, COVID, this variant, now this, and that, and other, like, Lord Jesus. But despite all that going on, 
praise God, there's still missionaries and American preachers yes. going overseas and minister. When all the chaos was going on in Afghanistan, when Biden pulled us all out at once and left Americans and others there, I know an American preacher, he lives uh, an hour, hour and a half north of us here in Ohio. He was over there because he's been over there several times and in those areas and was former, former military. He's over there with a team rescuing people in the middle of all that. And again, I know it's not for everybody, but too many are just sitting on their blessed assurance, not doing anything. So I praise God when I see people like that doing the stuff. And again, if I wasn't fighting all that I'm fighting right now, I'd have done already been on some ministry trips. Because I'm not done preaching to nations. I posted it on Facebook uh, well, last week, Emmanuel Dula. Yeah, I saw that. I went to Pakistan with him a few years ago, and he just lives like two miles from me. But he messaged me and wanted to come over, fellowship with me, pray for me. So he came over Friday, so we spent some time together. Even though he hasn't been over there, and we support him monthly, he still sends money over there. He's talking about children that are starving and have no shoes or clothes. So he's constantly... And even a lot of the money that he made, he had preached, he said, 20 months. Because he does more evangelistic, you know, to raise funds and all that. And he had preached in 20 months. But he still, is, I guess he's working two types of jobs right now. And he's still sending money over there. But he said, I asked if he had any plans to go to Pakistan. He said, towards the end of next year, he's planning a trip. Whether it's with him or not, I will go to Pakistan again. I will go to India again. I will go to other nations again and preach yes. the gospel yes. of the kingdom. Yes. The enemy might have delayed some of what God wants to do, but again, that delay isn't going to stop me from fulfilling my post. This delay, sickness, disease isn't going to stop me from fulfilling my dream, God-given yes. dreams and visions. Yes. Now again, we're rooted here. I'm, you know, I don't see it all ever going full-time on the mission field or anything like that. My heart is here with y'all. But I know, especially as an apostle, a sent one, I'm going to go in and out and back and forth. Amen. And again, I know that's why the enemy has fought me so hard with sickness and disease. But again, victory is mine. Yes. And I'm not yes. just, and I've said it before, and I'm going to continue to say it. I'm not just going to be a survivor of leukemia, yes. merely existing. I'm going to be an overcomer. Yes. And am an overcomer yes. of leukemia. The same with the heart issue and anything else going on. I'm an overcomer yes. in Jesus' name. Yes. And again, because it means so much to us, we do continue to thank you for all your prayers for us. And just encourage you to continue. And I said us, because he needs it as well for the strength to continue to stand. Because when we do get some bad news or this isn't working yet or whatever it is, she still has to hear that. And it's still in the battle and fight, believe in God yes. for my breakthrough. Amen. 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 So who's Jesus to you? Yes. Well, he should be Savior. And I didn't yes. even get into everything. He should be healer. Yes. He should yes. be deliverer. Yes. He should be Prince of Peace. Yes. He should be your joy giver. And I say this a lot, your rock, yes. your refuge, your yes. fortress, your strength, yes. a very present help in trouble. He's everything you need him to be when you need him to be it. Amen. Amen. I'm going to call Pastor Charlotte up. We're going to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We're going to worship whoever he is to you. Now, we're doing some Christmas songs, obviously, but we're still, I think you still got a couple other good ones in that we normally do. We're going to worship him this morning, and we're going to have some good fellowship, food, and door prizes. <laughs> Test, test. Hallelujah. Good thing he didn't push me. I passed the test. He pushed me to the side. I'm like, oh, where did I go? To the side. 